Folks, we're in for our Simply Trade podcast, and we've got a new show here that is uh, going to get to talk about the uh, trade symposium and what went on there. So we've got a panel that is uh, going to be phenomenal. These these ladies are, uh, I, I'm telling you, they scared me to death because I've had the privilege of meeting with every single one of them, one-on-one as well as in a group. And I'm telling you, they, they, <laughs> they, they pull no punches <laughs> when it comes to me anyway. Okay, Cindy, let's start with you on the, the, we're talking about the trade symposium that was held, was it in Philadelphia? It was held in Philadelphia and it's not the symposium anymore. It is the trade facilitation and cargo security summit. Um, so they renamed it and rebranded it a little bit, but basically it's the same. You have about a thousand international trade folks coming together to listen to CBP talk about different things that are important to them and things that are important to the trade. Um, And uh, it was, uh, you know, great seeing a lot of people from the industry. Um, One of the biggest events of of the year, actually, for those in international trade. Um, And it's put on by the government. So you have a lot of government stakeholders there. Fantastic um, opportunity to meet with many of them. And I don't know... um, Amy and Amy, if you noticed it, but I noticed CBP hanging out with the trade a lot more than they have in the past. Um, You know, they sat with us, they talked to us, they, you know, they stayed after, they, dare I say it, had a drink in the bar with us. It was, uh, it was (laughs) You mean they actually socialized with you? Yeah, it was, and you know, it it kind of brought me back to the to the older days, um, you know, the older days, oh my gosh, we're the older people, um, except for Amy Morgan, your baby. <laughs> but um, it, it brought me back to the, to the days when, you know, we would have these massive trade support network meetings where customs would actually sit with us and talk to us and, and have conversations. But um, I thought it was, was a good networking with CBP opportunity um, overall. CBP was certainly more approachable than they have been in years past. But one of my takeaways is that they really need help from the trade. They have some pretty serious problems. Uh, and, and in fact, we as a country probably have some pretty serious problems. Um, and oddly enough, it, it seemed to me that the emphasis was a uh, not as much on trade as it was on the smuggling of fentanyl. And, or at least that's the thing that resonated with me the most when I attended the sessions is that CBP is really struggling to get their arms around this uh, very dangerous drug. And, um, you know, people in the United States clearly are uh, being poisoned by uh, this drug that's coming in. So I think that they really need to have more uh, cooperation and assistance from those of us who are involved in the supply chain. And so that seemed to be a major focus. At least that's what I took away. Um, and also another observation that I made is that it seemed like there was a whole lot more about enforcement than there was about facilitation. And, and that's just sort of the feeling that I got. So yes, CBP was very friendly and we got to socialize. But I think, first of all, they need us. And secondly, I think um, that we are entering an era of enforcement, perhaps unlike anything that what we've seen in the past. There was an hour and a half panel on fentanyl and how CBP is working really hard to combat that and what they're doing. And I said that could have been summed up in three sentences. Drugs are bad. Um, Smuggling money laundering is facilitating that. And CBP is doing everything it can to, you know, facilitate finding that. But I, as an international trader, didn't know what I was supposed to do. Yeah, we're supposed to help, but but how? Um, and I was hoping to get a little more clarity in some of the uh, some of the breakout sessions. But a lot of it was just more of the same. You know, drugs are bad. Know your supply chain. Drugs are bad. Know your supply chain. Drugs are bad. Know your supply chain. And I, I remember being in one of the sessions where they talked about you should be educating your uh, the people who handle the freight um, more. And I just thought the people loading the boxes aren't really the ones who are putting the drugs in there. 
there. Um, you know, it's being interjected along the way. And, and I, I really, um, struggled with, okay, this is what I need to go out and communicate to the, to the trade about what they should do other than know your supply chain. And can I just add to that? They did give us, uh, some information about what we could be looking for, uh, vague descriptions on manifests, for example, uh, that we should be mindful of that as perhaps a problem. Um, they did mention precursor type chemicals and they went through a list of, of those that we should be on the lookout for. They were, they educated us, if you will, about, um, uh, pill presses and the parts that are um, a part of a pill press that are coming in uh, and being, of course, described as like tools or, um, you know, tool pieces. And they actually had uh, in some of the booths, they had samples of what a pill press uh, type. Um, I don't even know what it's called, but it's just a little thing that presses pills. And they said, look, these things are coming in to the United States uh, in, in very large volume. And of course, Obviously, you can legally import pill presses if you're a pharmaceutical company and you're making legitimate medication, but they are finding these things coming in in a, a huge quantity um, <clears throat> to produce large numbers of pills that are being laced with fentanyl. And then, of course, the real struggle is the um, the small little amount of fentanyl can be lethal. Dealing with this kind of scenario, it seems like vetting your the parties you're doing business with, the, the, the suppliers, the customers, the distributors, the carriers even, I understand all that, but literally trying to figure out um, how to handle all this and where the red flags are. So I, I can't look at everything. So it was like, where do I need to focus my attention. So can the systems help me here? If I'm an importer compliance person, where the Sam hell do I need to look? How am I going to handle all this? How's that for setting you up for a softball? <laughs> um, no, actually. So I want to, I, I want to turn your question on its side, just, just a little bit as far as how I respond to it, because I, I, what I really took away from last week, after all the sessions, after the the smuggling sessions, the de minimis sessions, the CTPAT sessions, GBI, all of these things, there is a common theme across all of these things that gets to the heart of what Cindy just talked about. It's leaving people scratching their heads, well, how do I do this? Well, the, the common theme across all of those sessions, all of the themes last week is really what Brandon Lord said in the GBI session about knowing how the products we make and then import are made is now more important than what it is and who we're getting it from and, and uh, who we're selling things to, right? So take it out of just screening your, knowing your supply chain, which they said many, many times on repeat, right? Um, and it's important, but it's more than just knowing your chain. It's actually understanding the, your products that you are facilitating across borders, right? So, um, can, your question, Andy, is then can, can systems help us? Is there technology can help us? Can AI help us? And my answer to that is yes, because I don't think there is a solution without some sort of advanced technology that can take all the massive amounts of trade data that we generate and consume every minute of every day in this business and crunch it all together to paint that picture, right? There, You need a system. There, there needs to be a technology involved there. And so AI can help us pull that data together and then can illuminate that you say a supply chain, a supply chain network, go deeper than than supply chain, go down to the value chain. I want to see who I'm buying my finished goods from and I want to know who they're getting their materials from and who they're getting their materials from and then what farm they're getting their raw materials from. That's the that's the common theme throughout everything last week. If you want to know how to comply with the UFLPA and be prepared for an, an applicability review, if you want to know how to... Uh, find or use data to help find illegal drug trafficking in your chain. If you want to calculate your scope three carbon emissions or assess the compliance of your de minimis emissions, you name it, 
it comes down to knowing that the product and, and the product's own chain. But you still got to have somebody go, what am I looking for? And it's like, you got to give somebody that's tenured, you know, the ability to guide some of the younger folks, if you will, or, or rookies in the industry to go through that. The question is, how do we do that? I mean, there's some, there's some folks in the industry that are freaking out going, I'm going to lose my job over this. It's like, no, 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 no. You're actually going to be so much more enhanced and being able to provide guidance to these folks. But I mean, how do we, how do you tap that, Amy, uh, with, you know, your, your, your service provider and your clients? I see this as a little bit of a glimmer of hope. And I know not everybody's going to agree, but Part of ACE 2.0 is something that they used to call blockchain, and then they called it distributed ledger, and now it's being called global interoperability. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on it because it's it's something that a lot of people just can't seem to grasp. But to me, it's it it's actually pretty straightforward, which is you get information from what we call non-traditional parties earlier in the process. And this is all pre-arrival, pre-release type information that is being assembled in a way that is immutable. I, I'm not sure that that's the right use of that word, but that it's, it's secure information that can be relied upon and cannot be changed. And it can be tagged so that you know from whom it is coming. Now, of course, everything can be, you know, ruined somehow or another, but the concept of being able to lodge information in uh, a way that can be accessible to those who need to know it, to use it for the purposes that they need it for. For instance, a carbon footprint may have nothing to do with what customs requires, but because this information is being collected right at the point of manufacturing uh, and then becomes accessible and reliable, and then we have the GBI, which we talked about at length the last time, the global business identifier, where we're starting to identify additional parties in the supply chain. They all have a role here. 